Are you from New York? <laughs> I'm from Boston, but I've lived in New York for like three and a half years. Got it. Another guest that could have easily been in New York, but Josh snagged for LA. Just <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> what can I say? Well, here we are on The Good Guys with our friend Brianna. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. So, so exciting. From I love you guys. Oh my gosh. I saw, I literally saw your billboard in Boston <gasps> while I was driving to the airport and I was <gasps> like, wait, what the f I, I thought it was obviously one of the funny, like, like the lawyer things. And then sure. I was like, no, I know him. I know him. It was so good. It was so oh good. my God. I love God. that. Why Josh, Boston? Josh, the billboards are working. Why Boston? Because we get Is free billboards. Is it billboard. only Boston? No, no, no. We, 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 take free free, we take free oh, billboards. Okay, it, I like we, that. <laughs> we have a billboard in Boston. We have a couple in New York. We have two in Saudi Arabia and one in Turkey. Shut and up. We do? <laughs> no. Oh my God, I was like, you guys are sick. <laughs> we're, in, we're in Abu Dhabi and yeah. Kansas. <laughs> I need a free billboard? How do you, the hell? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have my people call. Yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, it's, what it's, is it's this a, billboard hookup of yours? Because you just offer it, Ben, and I go, sounds good, honey. I'm like your wife who signed, I'm like Madoff's wife. I just go, sign here, babe. <laughs> yeah. You need, <laughs> you need, <seems> legal. <laughs> you need reservations at fancy restaurants. You need free billboards. Those are the two things that I can help with. Oh, Those you're that guy. Okay. I'm, I'm that guy. The billboards and the and the restaurants. Oh um, but I'm so happy that you saw that. It was it's <laughs> like such like a fun moment for us. We have no idea if it does anything. Like, what does at home even do? But maybe it does something. Maybe people it did are something to it. me. It resonated. Wow. Yeah. I freaking mm -hmm. love that. That's great. well, it's funny because we originally wanted a QR code on the billboards. Uh -huh. And then literally the Federal Transportation Commission was like, hey, assholes, you want people snapping pictures while driving of your QR code? And we were like, okay, sorry, we're trying to be industrious. And <laughs> that's crazy. I feel like I see QR codes all the time you do not on billboards on freeways though and then of course <laughs> we take the true. exact same creative and we put it on these billboards we now have like these street level billboards next to subway stations in the city that are freaking sweet and i've gotten okay. at least 100 dms from these like marketing girlies that are like you really should have put on a qr code it's like we tried we, we tried. tried and i'm not reversioning the creative for every state i'm sorry i'm just <laughs> that's fair it's co copy and paste, copy and paste, move on. It is what it is. We've got billboards in Texas. It's the same billboard, but we're just in cowboy hats. Yeah. Like we superimpose <laughs> yeah. the cheese heads yeah. in Wisconsin. Yeah. Every single state is different. Uh, that's, that's I funny. love it. I wonder if they work. Do you think billboards work? Uh, uh, by the way, if you saw it, Right? And, and guess, you felt something, it worked. Yeah. But you can't measure it, which makes it really, really hard to like actually spend money on. I don't know. I think they work. I think they work really well if you're a massive brand. Like, okay, but, like, like a Bud Light having uh, an ad to remind you that they exist. Genius. Verizon, mm. genius. When you're like a smaller brand, I think it's like a... I yeah, think when it's you're a, like a new guy, it's like, what the... Is that? Yeah, it's like not the it's not like the seventh, not to get like too marketing y, but like there are seven <laughs> points of awareness for a conversion and the billboard shouldn't be your first. It should be your seventh. It's like the, hey, uh, I exist. So the next time you're in the liquor store, go and buy Spirit Society or mm. uh I guess high noon. What can we say? High noon. Fire water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what is the deal with high noon and bar stool? Like for for people that work there. Like of course I know Portnoy, but like do you have to hawk high noon? No. So high noon is really like just Dave's thing at Barstool. So he's like the face of it, the ambassador, which is crazy. What's crazy about high noon is you have to be 25 at Barstool to endorse it. So I right. like I do pirate water which is like my alcohol brand at barstool but i couldn't even if i wanted to like promote high noon because i'm 24 you're 24 yeah you're crushing it oh, thank you good for you i mean i knew you were young but 24 i'm so envious i'm 37 I feel, well i mean like all like josh josh richards he's like 21 and i'm like i feel like a grandma everyone is so so much younger than me so when you say that i'm like yes i needed that oh 24 is young no, 21 is young you're, yeah you're, 21 is so young you're crushing it i had no clue I had no would, idea. I definitely can you imagine rolled. Josh Richards like Ben? Can you imagine looking like him for like a day? No. Nice yeah. What would, would you no. guys do? I'd walk <sighs> around naked. No, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I would say thank you to my Christian parents for not being Jewish <laughs> and uh, yeah. and admire my natural born physique. Where he, I could probably honestly, I'd go to Quiznos and eat two subs and not feel bad about it. That's what I do. Yeah, that's true. That's I bet he I just do. walks around and people are just nicer to him. Definitely, Imagine, they're just always getting like looked at with smiles. 
Yeah, oh, I couldn't imagine. It's, it's probably thing. it's probably like being a King Charles Cavalier on the street. Like you look at them and they're, <laughs> you're just like, wow, they're so cute and, and beautiful. Pretty people are, you know, like I, I I did a TV show with John Stamos where like I played his son, mm -hmm. which was absurd. I wish I could go back and tell Chubby yeah, crazy, Josh. Crazy, right? Like, one day things are going to work out. Like you'll be able to pass for Stamos's offspring. That's sick. You can say you're super hot just because of that. I'm honored. Well, uh, at least it's like not like the worst, like a car wreck as I once was, but what was crazy was seeing people's reaction around him. Mm -hmm. Women would just get inappropriate. Really? Around mm. Yeah. Like women around John Stamos turn into dudes in the 90s. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I saw like a very famous actress walk by him and go, oh, I like you. <laughs> and I was like, ma'am, get it together. They just lose all of it and they're like primal for yeah. John Stamos. She was like, you keep smiling at me like that. Something's going to happen. I'm, I'm like, take you back. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna get you canceled, ma'am. <laughs> Holy shit. I know that's crazy, but then it's like when women do it, is it like, oh, it's just like kind of creepy. But if a guy were to do it, it's like, oh my gosh, lock him up. Lock him yeah. up, oh, yeah. please. And throw away the key. Mm -hmm. Double standard. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> Trump. No. Just, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, wearing like red, white, and blue. <laughs> this, this is a deeply patriotic podcasts i feel like oh, i knew that i'm wondering if like like with bffs you have the you have two massive podcasts you're, you're totally crushing it i don't know how you guys are but like with us we just don't really do politics because we're like we don't want to divide our audience fair and, enough yeah but like as we're coming into this in november of 2024 it's going to be wild like will we mm -hmm. all have to start talking a little bit more about it no nope. i don't know i I, I don't think so. Nope. I don't, I don't, I'm not smart enough and I don't claim to be smart enough. I'm not, I'm not on doing a podcast to be a news channel. I'm doing a podcast to say stupid stuff. So mm. when people want me to talk about politics, I'm like, why? I'm not that guy. You don't want smart. to get your information from me. That's so smart of you to know your lane yeah, and I just, where you thrive. I, I'm, I claim stupid. When it, <laughs> when it comes to that, it's like, that's not my job. I dropped out of college. What college did you drop out of? I was at a tiny school in Cleveland and I dropped out and moved to New York and then worked at Barstool. So crazy. I was in, I was going to go to med school. Were you, was it like the Cleveland Clinic? Like, what was the <laughs> I school? Know, but I was gonna, oh, it was called Baldwin Walls. This is where I was going. So I, I was going to go to dental school. Look at that. Were you? Wow. I, and now look I at was, us. I was. Look at us. I didn't drop out. Now we out. talk politics. I, I, I didn't drop out though. I weirdly have a minor in chemistry that no will never be used ever. Wow. But, I kind of yeah. want to go back to school, but you I should. don't know. You should. I, you should become a doctor. You, do you know how, imagine how crazy that would be? <laughs> do you know how much? Do you know how much money you'd make as a plastic surgeon now? Like you that's could, what I wanted to do. Yeah, well, you could have your own show, like a botched. We'll get you and Terry Dubrow. We'll, uh, we'll pitch it to like <sighs> Oxygen. You're, you'll be freaking loaded. I do the surgeries and I botch them, and then he fixes them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Love that's that. good. Yeah, because I don't think I'd be that good. I'd be like drunk or something. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's ben, good. Ben, say something smart chemistry style. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. You put me on the spot. A beaker? What's a beaker? <laughs> a, a, a beaker a beaker's like a test tube. And mm. uh, chemistry is is cool. And um, <laughs> Isn't it crazy uh, how fun. it was your whole life and it's all you knew in your brain? And then yeah, and, when and, you stop doing it, it leaves. You forget all of it. I, I know, I know nothing. Minor. I know nothing. I know how nothing. How do you know, Ben? How do you know not? I mean, you have a minor. This a isn't mi chemistry. I have, I have, a, I have a full minor. So you devoted four years to chemistry, and you can't even like wow no, us for no, twenty no, no. seconds. No, 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 not four years. A minor is not a minor. You probably it's devote like, yeah. maybe three quarters of a year. My major was biology. I, out the door. I don't remember. Really? Yeah. And and ma majors you really focus on for I don't know a year to a year and a half. The first two-ish years of college are learning about God knows what. Then all of a sudden you start to select, okay, majors, minors, whatever. And those are your focus courses, but you still learn a lot of other random crap. Yeah, I had like six history classes, a religion class, an art, and I was a bio major. And it was crazy. It made no sense. I was like, why? how are you paying for this? Yeah. College is weird. College is weird. Do you weird. go to college? No, I was a child actor. <laughs> oh, I forgot. My <laughs> youth was stolen. It I didn't was. even have a choice. Mm. My mom made me get into a secret agreement when I was 16 that I was going to support the family no matter what, hell or high water. Wow. I wanted to be a dentist. Wow. That's <laughs> Anything else? I love, I love Barb. She's Barb's the best. Do we woman. love Barb? Oh, Barb's love. Okay. We love Barb. We love okay. our, we love our moms on this show. Even I love Barb, my mom too. 10 out of 10. Yeah. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. Unlike Jeanette McCurdy. your mom. Yeah. 
Oh, what, I know she f- hates it. <laughs> <laughs> who who is your who's been your favorite guest? And I don't know if you can say least favorite guest. You probably can't. But who's been your favorite guest on your podcast? Hmm, favorite guest other than Josh. Thank you. Um, God bless. Uh, favorite guest on BFFs for me probably would have been oh Cody Co and Noel because that was like one of my first one of my first episodes and mm. I was like die hard still am love them but they are what got me into podcasting and like youtube and everything so when they came on also i feel like a lot of their jokes just went over the guys heads <laughs> and i was like the only one catching them and i was like this is great i love them so much but that, that's when i was still silent on the podcast i didn't like talk on the podcast until a year into it which was insane and so to that point what what was the thing that dave saw that made him want to make this podcast possible and bring you the three of you together so it was him and josh which <laughs> like the side of that is just kind of crazy that yeah. he's like dave's like 40 josh was like 19 at the time and it was too broy so they brought like a bunch of people um, in Barstool on and like trialed and errored and then I came in and I was the first like TikTok girl at Barstool They didn't mm. like really know what it was what it was gonna be And I knew all of like the TikTok drama and all the boring stuff I was like that girl so I came on and I think I helped balance it out where it wasn't just two bros going back and forth and like Girls wanted to listen to the podcast, which was cool. Yeah, but like I said didn't talk for a while I was terrified of Dave. I thought I hated Josh. I thought he was like a loser and now we're best <laughs> friends Why I don't know like I mean you've seen the videos he got famous for Sure, they're a little they're which they're like you could say the same to me cringe, but it his were a little like that's just like not a guy I'd want to hang out with but then you meet him and he's this charismatic like fucking little beautiful statue man walking around so I did fall in love with him. He's like my little brother. He and very genuine. Like oh yeah, for sure. He it's he's Canadian. He's Canadian. Canadian. Good for us. What Canadian. the fuck with us. the Canadians is crazy. I was just talking about that on my car right here with my friend. We have these Canadian friends where it's like every time like we comment on their pictures, they'll text us, "I love you, miss you," which should be like a normal thing. But to us Boston girls, we're like, this is suspiciously nice. Like I get mm. suspicious <laughs> of people that mm. are too nice. I'm like. Are you a murderer or are you saying bad things behind my back? If people are too nice, it freaks me out. <laughs> That's a good uh, subject to bring up. Like, are, is a normal amount of reticence and protection and defense better than when someone comes in really hot and like, because sometimes I'll feel bad, but I'll be like, why is this person being so nice? It mm. sets off alarms. For well, me. okay. So Matt Reif came on BFFs. Uh, I don't, I have no sense of time, like two months ago or three mm. months ago. And he came into the office and he was like alarmingly nice. Like he came in, he went up to everyone and like shook their hands in a way where like he looked in their eyes and he was just like overcompensating for something. Like a politician kind yes. of? Yes. And I'm like, why are you campaigning? You're a comedian. What the fuck are you, what's this going on? And right when he left, we were like, he was too nice. And then three weeks later, no news broke that he had like a bajillion girlfriends at the same time. And he was like <laughs> a terrible person. And I was like, yeah, wow. wow. Too nice. Serial killer vibes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, wow, yeah. that, that's crazy. But yeah, too nice is just people, you got to have self-awareness. It, yeah, just it, be it, like it, regular nice. Just be regular nice and know who you're being too nice to. Because yeah. because certain people, if if they're too nice to me, but I see them like, oh, this this lovely woman from from Idaho is just like <laughs> a lovely Idahoian woman, right? Like exactly. I have no issues, but I'm sure Matt Reif is overly nice with those muscles and whatever. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yep, something's wrong. And, yeah, and yeah. why are you too nice? I I watched that. I don't know if we want to talk about it, but I I watched that Netflix special and uh, I did, and I did not laugh. I don't uh, I don't know if I'm alone in that, but and I don't know if we want to talk about that, but I but are you uh, like a ha ha comedy guy or no? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't laugh. And it's funny. I actually did laugh at the part where he's under the most fire uh, for that. <laughs> domestic abuse joke i i did giggle at that but i, I laughed at the wrong parts too uh, yeah like a little giggle i'm not really i don't know i'm not really that into comedy specials but i watched it because he was coming on the podcast and i don't know i was i was nice when he came on maybe i'm a fake bitch but when he came on i was like <laughs> yeah it was, like, it was funnier than i thought but like i had known so much prior information about him because he brooke schofield you, you know yeah she's yes. awesome i knew everything that he had done to her but it was 
like it wasn't news like she was my friend she told me when it happened so i like secretly hated him when he came on the podcast but i had to be nice to him because i didn't want to out brooks information because sure. if i was mean they'd be like why and I, i'd be like well i can't tell you i just have a bad feeling so <laughs> i was nice to him when he came on the podcast and now i'm looking back and i'm like damn i'm just kind of fake i guess no nah, <laughs> i i think you probably handled it the correct way i mean listen i i i think his crowd work clips the ones i've seen are excellent like yeah. he obviously has this talent for that thing and clearly i think you just unfortunately you have to be okay that you're not going to be for everyone and i think that's yeah. a hard totally thing for people yes. when they become 100 so famous so quickly especially because he's so defensive and protective about the opinion on him so like like you said he's commenting on everything but it's crazy how he was lifted up so like universally and torn down so quickly by like the same people. So Brie, you're from Boston. Yes. Boston, Boston proper, Southie, Dorchester. I grew up in Southie. You grew up in Southie? I grew up in Southie. Well, until I was like 10 and then I moved to the suburbs. So is Southie like Goodwill Hunting? Like, are there like handsome boys who are like misunderstood geniuses? Uh, no. Or is it more like the town? <laughs> <laughs> it's more like the town but that's so much better to me like oh it's my just god it's a bunch of ben afflecks <laughs> yes oh my god i'm like so uh, i i was having this argument with a bunch of people we were talking about who's hotter ben affleck or um brad pitt and i'm obviously saying ben affleck and everyone's like you're an idiot it's brad pitt <laughs> but i have this thing instilled in me where it's like this boston guy ben affleck is just it's ben affleck what would you guys say I, Brad, I, think, I, I would probably yeah, say right? Brad, I would probably say Brad Pitt. Like, I was the only one saying but, Ben Affleck. But that said, there's something really hot about the Ben Affleck smoking a cigarette, like the, you know, like yeah, what, what, those, drinking yeah. a Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah, he's a man's just, man. He's a man's ass cracks man. Out. He's a man's man. Yeah. Man's but, man. But no, Southie is. It's a bunch of. I feel like there is a, a requirement to be good looking there. Everyone, mm. all the girls, all the guys are super good looking. But there's no like secret genius there. Defin <laughs> yeah. Definitely not. Like just I'm a from bunch there. of longshoremen and and, <laughs> and drug dealers. <laughs> yeah, blue collar. But I love that. That that sounds great. And then, do you ever like? Are your your family's still there? So yeah. you go back and you yeah. And you said one day you'd like to like end up there. Yeah, I want. I still have my childhood house that I grew up in in Southie that I might go back to one day. Wow. Yeah, I I definitely will return to Boston. Will you guys return to where? I guess you won't. Never, never left. I won't. Yeah. Jo well, I'm gonna never make. Left. I'm gonna make Josh return. I'm gonna make you him. Should, would you? I. So here's my thing: is that I actually think people, even if you're from the greatest city in the world, mm -hmm. right? Be it Boston <laughs> or New York, duh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think you have made a mistake if you don't spend a couple years out of the place where you were. Agree. Born. Agree. Ben. Yeah. You've what, never lived what the, anywhere what else. The, do you want from me? No, why would Go I leave? Go somewhere why else. Why would I leave? It's Stop the, being it's the, so New it's York. It's the best city. It's the best. But like, you have to live. I totally agree. You have yes. to live somewhere else in your life. Even uh, if it's in Idaho, just like ship, go somewhere else. The ship has sailed. The ship has sailed. It's I over. I guess that's true. It's is over. Your, I, is your wife from California? It, I love that the ship has sailed until we find <laughs> out that Ben and Claudia had three kids and moved. Because we know that's next. Yeah. yeah so but, 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 by the way, but by the way, that is the equivalent of the ship has sailed. You know, like if I, I like, I'm not going to move somewhere incredibly adventurous. I'm not going to spend 18 months in Florence or like, no, like maybe, sure. Maybe I move to Florida. Maybe, maybe I move to, honestly, I just got back from Utah. I got to say a ranch in Utah sounds freaking sweet. That I support. I think I want to go there. Yeah. For a year, I want to live there. Florida. I cannot believe anyone would live there. I know. I really Even don't Dave, want to. But he's rich. He's rich. It's different, but still Florida, not for me. I hate I, it. I hate I'm, Miami. I, I'm really? not, a, I'm not yeah. a Florida person either. I'm with you. Miami is it's just, it's so, oh, it's so Miami. Oh, it's like it's, rancid. I get it, shit. I get shit when I say that, but I hate Miami. No, Miami is very Times Square. Yes. Right. Yes. And everyone is always in like a tight little dress walking around at like seven in the morning. I'm like, how do you guys do this? How do you live this life? Everyone's a drug a, addict if I live there. Everyone's mm, a hooker. Fine. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. Everyone's a hooker. Hooker, hookers and blow. But it's very By the way, European. Now I want to yes. move to Miami. No, it, it, no. <laughs> but there's like good food it's very european there's obviously like an incredible latin influence like i feel like that's kind of the fun part is like that yeah. crossroads of cultural i don't know ben's not about it i can tell it on his face mm, the food is like okay but i don't know miami it feels like a 
casino town that is stuck. When I go to Miami, I feel like I'm stuck in this time capsule and I cannot wait to get out of the fucking time capsule. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I don't want to shit on all of Florida though, because I actually, I, I think Fort Lauderdale, super fun. I know it's like a little gross. Super fun. I like fun. it better than Miami. Yeah. Me, me too. Del Rey, really fun. Honestly, Boca, nothing wrong with it. You go over mm-hmm. to Tampa. Tampa's cool. Jacksonville, I think I'm with you. Bree, mm-hmm. I think Miami is the problem. Mm-hmm. I love Delray Beach. That's one of my favorite. You yes. sound like you own a Panera bread, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> name I'm a franchisee. Yeah, yeah, so franchise. <laughs> oh, man, you haven't lived here. You've been to Fresno, California. <laughs> uh, I, I, say, I say I hate places, though, and but I could like live and be happy anywhere. Anywhere I go, I'm like, oh, I think I could do this. Every time I come to L.A., I'm like, yeah, I think this is it. I think this is it. You were just on a beautiful vacation with your boyfriend in, in Australia? Oh, yes. What did you think of Australia? Well, I want to move there. But really? Everywhere I go, I'm like, I want to move there. I did want to, I was supposed to move to Australia during uh, COVID happened, so I couldn't move there. I was going to study abroad, and then I was like, I'm just going to start my life here and become a surfer and like be a bartender. And you had never been there? or you? Were... I had been there once. I'd been there in high school. And you were just like, this is going like, to be is the it. new me. Oh my God, the people there are so cool. Have you guys been? No, I've never been. I'm oh too. I'm, God. I'm too afraid well, of the length of the flight. I'm too afraid of the length of the flight. I do. I do Slept travel. I don't. I. I don't <laughs> just like sit and bike. Like I travel. I travel. Okay. But okay. but I just won't live anywhere. But the flight has always scared me. Isn't it 24 hours? Yeah, it's well from New York to LA, and then it's like 16 hours. But flights are my fa- like long flights are my favorite thing. Me too. I feel like it's the only time I can shut off, and I feel like I'm like just relaxing. I mean, nobody ever told me that it's a New York to L.A. than 16 hours. It's far more approachable. Yeah, it's not that bad. Not you that could also bad. do the longest flight in the world, which is Newark to Singapore, which is 19 hours. And then a quick three hour hop. <laughs> to, hop skipping a jump. To Australia, mate. <laughs> oh, you could do that. The Brian Kelly just took over your body on that one. That was a, <laughs> I, that was a straight you. points guy. I know my AV. I did a movie with this gorgeous Australian accent or accent actress. Uh, I did a movie with this gorgeous Australian actress who I was really in love with mm-hmm. throughout filming and for just, I don't know, years after. And, um, <laughs> and it so affected my like my fear. Uh, obviously, I'm a happily married man now, but my fear always of going to Australia until then was like, I'm going to fall in love too easily. Mm, that's like, fair. Well, in Australia, there's way more women than there are men. So <gasps> like it's it's the easiest place for a man to get a lover, a straight man to have a lover. Really? Yeah, there's like, wow. what is it? I don't know the statistic. Like I said, I didn't claim to be smart, but for mm. like, for every one woman, there's like five men or wow. something or the opposite. No, five women to one man. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Which is incredible considering no one lives in the middle. We found out yeah. last week that we have one singular listener every week in Pakistan. Shut up. No, we don't yeah. know. We don't know who they are. Wait, but, you but have I to... checked the data and honestly, now is the right time. Please reveal yourself. I was if you say, are our Pakistani him. listener, I want to celebrate you. I want to know who Please. you are. Send us an email. DM Have us. Have as a guest. I would, lo- I would love it. For our just Pakis- like five minutes. Our, pa- our Pakistani listener. Good yeah. guys live from Islamabad? That is sick. Uh, you imagine? <laughs> that, you guys are world fucking wide. Do you think the president's ever allowed to, you know, like they're getting asked so many questions a day. Mm. Obama was famous for having three suits and, or, or, well, three colors of suits and he didn't deviate because mm-hmm. he had so much decision fatigue of mm-hmm. how many things he had to answer throughout the day. He's like, I don't like why Steve Jobs wore the same outfit yeah. all the time. Do you think ever a president can go like, I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out. Can someone help me. <laughs> Why are you asking me? <laughs> uh, they I... have to, right? Once, maybe like in the closet and then they step out and they're like, this is what we're doing. Yeah, I don't know. Like, do they have to be sure of themselves? Imagine your life that stressful where you have to wear the same outfit every day because it's too much to change clothes. Yeah. I would I would kill myself, I think. That would be crazy. I think they all lean on everyone, but we're not, you're not sneaking <laughs> me into politics, Josh. You're not doing it. <laughs> You're not <laughs> doing it. I'm politics. on a slip. I'm on a slippery slope. I'm falling down a slide. I'm keeping my mouth shut. Oh, did you get in trouble? No, I just feel like I will. I just, I can't. <laughs> That's explain. fair. I just, it's just, there's too many just real opinions that sit inside this beautiful brain, and my brain <laughs> mouth is so close, and it's just getting closer. <laughs> nope, not happening. I feel you. I feel you. It's no. hard. A podcaster, like sometimes you forget. You're just 
you're talking to a bunch of people. I always feel like I'm just talking to my co-host and that mm. I forget it's going out into the world and there's a lot of people that are going to see it and be angry with some of the shit you say. I Have just feel, gotten... I, I just feel like Sorry, presidents thanks. in general just... Oh, all presidents, they have too many people around them that actually make the decisions. I feel like the actual president all the time is literally like, I don't know, I don't know, you, you, you. You know, they're just like a figurehead for like 45 million people that work for them that actually make their decisions. Thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's true, right? There's an army that makes up the president. It's just yeah. like, cool. All right, that was my controversial take, so that's that. Have <laughs> you gotten into hot water for things you've said on the podcast? Oh, Yeah. Uh, to countless times. Really? Yeah. And how do you sort of weather that? Um, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really care because the internet to me isn't a, it's an, it's an echo chamber. It's not a real place, like a real place. You go out in the world, people aren't coming up to you saying they hate you or you're an idiot or you're a stupid bitch. It's like, that's just the comments sometimes. And I feel like it is hard. Like I've gotten into a lot of hot water the past. You talked about it on BFFs, I think with like the, the working class thing. Wh which part the the did you guys talk about it on bffs i think so the I'm nine sure. to five thing yes dave went on a whole rant yeah the people. rant thing like yes. we were getting uh, a lot of fire for that and that's when i think when you get picked up for one little thing that a lot of people hate then they start to pick apart your whole entire like online persona is which i've never experienced that until that and i just kind of stopped reading comments which I think is a good thing. I used to be so in the comment section, mm. seeing if if I didn't have positive reinforcement, I was like, am I doing a good job? Should I even be doing this? Now I have to realize like positive reinforcement and like negative comments are the same thing. They both hold no val like value. You can't yes. be like excited off of someone that you don't know saying you're amazing if you're like super upset about someone saying you're the worst. Like you just have to mm -hmm. invalidate all of the comments, which yes. is kind of hard because you want to, love all the good comments about yourself but oh. they, yeah i don't know it's weird when people turn out for me and say nice things it's just like it, it's i just want to be like you're right dad thanks <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah i but, know but the worst part yeah. is then someone says something that gets to you and it confirms your worst fear yeah right that you are not enough not smart enough not exactly you know uh, good looking enough whatever mm -hmm. right that, yeah that, that it's may, weird that maybe you have an egghead you know maybe mm -hmm. just do maybe. people say you have an egghead ben a couple people a couple people have said it. They have. See, and you then always I, remember. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, damn it, you do. But you do a really good job of hiding it sometimes. You know, it just is what it is. I have pepperoni nips and major depressive disorder. We're all human. Yeah, we all have our shit. We all have our problems. <laughs> We're all human. You have great nipples. You have, you have great nipples. <laughs> We've been in. He's do talking you show to your you nipples. Great, thank no, you. Yeah. <laughs> do you show your nipples on the pot a lot? Yeah, we, we've, we've been, been cold, we've been cold plunging. We've been oh, we've been over Zoom? No, you, know. you guys are so yeah. cold <laughs> over Zoom. That's funny. <laughs> Shout out Live Nation. Who's your boy? Live that, Method. That Live Method. Yeah, yeah. Live Method. Yeah. Live Nation. <laughs> the owning company. <laughs> it's big time. It's big time. But yeah, no, yeah, Josh, beautiful nipples. Good beautiful. nipples. Good. Good. So, yeah. so kind. Yeah, you either have really good nipples or bad nipples. I feel like there's no in between. So good for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and tell me, because I, I don't know if you talk about it ad nauseum, but like, so you recently sort of have gone into sort of public stardom and whatnot, and mm -hmm. then, and you're crushing it, and then you have this very high profile relationship. Yeah. Like, what's that? Do you mind talking about that? No, 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 that? it's okay. fine. Like, so what's that like? I mean, your boyfriend, Zach Bryant's crushing mm -hmm. it. Like, you, well, guys are, best. you guys are adorable together. Thank you. How is that, you know, having something that's very publicly commented on? The worst. Oh my gosh, mm. it's the worst. I had never had a, a public relationship. I mean, I've had boyfriends that I've like posted on social media before, but I've never dated like a public figure. Mm. And I always said I wouldn't. And then I met this guy, I fall in love with him. And how did you guys meet? Oh, I've actually never told the story. Yes. Of Clip it. This Go for it. I've, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> I haven't, not even on my podcast, I've never told the story of how like we met. It's kind of crazy. So J date, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, sorry. We uh, we started. He like DM'd me on Instagram, and we started chatting. I had went to 
one of his concerts mm. and uh, um he he was friends with billy football who is a barstool person and me and billy football went to the concert together but i went to the concert with um like my ex-boyfriend like i was at the concert with him i didn't meet zach that night but i ended up on stage with josh Richards singing mm. so zach had like saw me but i was in a relationship and i think like a month or yeah, a month later, he DM'd me on Instagram because I had made a podcast episode about like how amazing he was and his team was. And uh, I had just gotten out of a relationship and we started talking and we were texting like middle schoolers. And I was like, what the hell? This is crazy. You're like super famous. What's going on? Are we are you you're love bombing me? This is crazy. Like, I didn't know what if it was real. Or we were just like messaging on Instagram and never going to meet. And I I was texting him like drunk one night and he was like, I have to drive my truck from Philly to Oklahoma, but we had never met in person before. We haven't even FaceTimed and I was drunk. So I was like, do you need like a road trip partner? And he was like, sure. So the next morning I took the train from New York to Philly and the, our first time meeting, our first date was an 18 hour car ride together. And it could have been like the worst thing in the world or like the absolute best first date in the world. And we didn't turn the radio on one time and we talked for 18 hours straight we had like the best weekend of our lives and we didn't think we were ever going to see each other again. And then it was just like, we couldn't stop thinking about each other. And we were like, we've got to make this work. And now we're like inseparable, like wow, crazy. Yeah. It was a beautiful I'm love awful. story. That was yeah. an unbelievable movie. <laughs> I've already written I it. I know. It's so, it's so great. I couldn't, it's crazy. Couldn't that, even. That sounds like a movie it. of the week on the country music channel. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like. Insane. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Congrats. Yeah. So that, yeah, thanks. That was like, it's the best love story I've ever had. He's like the greatest guy in the world. He's so painfully normal. And like, he just wants to be a carpenter. Like it, he, he, it's so crazy. So I think that's why we work so well. We're like each other's peace because our lives are so chaotic and we get together and it's like, okay, this is home. So it's nice. And having a, a musician as a boyfriend, are you ever like wondering if he's writing, like if his new song is kind of about you or... <laughs> Yeah. Has he course. written a song about you? I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like he has to, right? <laughs> but also, also yeah. the crazy thing about musicians, and this is something like what you just asked, is it hard dating someone like so public and stuff? Because people pick apart his lyrics and like stuff like that. But he's a songwriter. So like half of the songs he writes, he's like creating stories. It's shit that may not have even happened in his life before. Mm. But the people on the internet don't seem to understand that. So like... Mm. It's annoying. I have to really like not look at stuff on the internet because people just pick apart his past relationships, my past relationships, every lyric, everything I say on my podcast. It's almost like exhausting. Mm. Yeah. Because like if my wife was a country singer and she had lyrics like, like you left your mouth guard on the nightstand <laughs> last night, I'd be like, that's me. <laughs> like, oh my God, that's about like, me. I love your lisp and your love handles. I'd be like, whoa, wow. she's I'm totally famous. <laughs> into me. Oh, like if her, me. if her single was lisp and love handles, I'd be like, that's about me, guys. That's a banger. <laughs> Imagine it's not about you, though. It's about another guy with the lisp and love handles. <laughs> Why oh, she has a type? <laughs> it, that was would about, hurt. it was about me. It was about me. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's it. It it really is interesting because whenever I've seen like famous couples mm -hmm. complain about insane paparazzi or whatever, mm -hmm. there's always been a part of me as someone removed who goes like, "Well, then don't be famous and date." Yeah, because that that is literally crack. For yeah, pop culture. People cannot. It's it's the prom king and the prom queen. I know. They can't handle it. So, but love is love. Feelings are feelings, mm -hmm. and you can't control it. I know. It is crazy. I never wanted it. It's really hard to have a public relationship, but I mean, it's worth it when you're with the right person. So happy about it. And honestly, he's so big, but there's no like paparazzi or anything. I feel like we fly like super under the radar, which is cool. We just like do our own thing. Wow. Well, yeah. ben, Ben's a celebrity and he's with someone famous. I know. You it's guys true. are probably more paparazzi and famous than me and Zach. I'm it's actually hard. serious. <laughs> it's hard being an A-list celebrity. It is. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. But you guys are both touring at the same time. Is that right? Yeah. So is that I hard? go to all of his shows and oh, he'll do. come to all of mine, which is really nice. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's and yeah. And how do you like, like, how does, do you live in the same city or you don't? Yes, we do. Oh, you do. You do. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. We live in New York. 
thank cool. God. But we're usually on the road, which is kind of insane. So we have we've had a hectic life. We've only been dating for like six months, but we've done so much together that it feels like ten years. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And, and do you guys, because it's only six months, do you ever talk about like long term stuff? Just because like if you guys are moving so quickly, like the yeah. idea of settling down, it's, and you're so young, and yeah, it's just not the time, right? Yeah, no, we're just taking it day by day, and we. Like I said, we've never been like we're never separated. This is the longest we've been separated. So I think it's good for us right now. <laughs> Cute. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Like, yeah. My wife's like, go, go away. Yeah. Like stay longer. I'm, I'm like, sure those days will come. Yeah. <laughs> like, but we're no. still in like the honeymoon phase. I'm like, I'm going to fly back. So she's like, I missed no, you. you have to. <laughs> she's like, see if there's a flight tomorrow. I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She always wants me back. I'm like, are you over me? It's almost 13 years. See, she's that's like, adorable. That's what I want. She likes me. Mm, That's good. It's weird. You should like your wife, I think. And your wife should like you. Mm. My wife's the bee's knees. I'm a big fan of her. She's a great mom. Mm. She's good pe I'd love to hear about you guys. Like, because I certainly had people that I dated before my wife where I was like very into them as it applied to me. Mm. And by that I mean like I just liked the way I felt when I was around them. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But I didn't really care about them in a um in a holistic like the way they affect the world Mm -hmm. my wife i like her as like a mom and as a daughter and as obviously as my wife but like the way in which she walks through exists you just love the person she is i'm a fan of her existence that's beautiful is that do you guys feel that way yes yes yeah absolutely and it's 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 interesting though i don't think we've spoken about this but claudia was like really we were each other's first like serious boyfriend girlfriends like we met Mm. when we were 20 and 18 and we've been together for 11 years and it's like i've uh, i've watched her as she with me like i've watched her just grow like she's she's evolved as a person both with me and in front of me and i've uh loved every second of it truly truly yeah it's beautiful yeah love her yeah i feel like i've had a lot of relationships too where you're not really living like separate lives and you don't get to watch the person succeed. It's like you guys are kind of just doing the same thing all the time. It's really nice to be in a relationship where you both feel like you're your own people and you get to like appreciate the things that each other do. If that makes sense. Like I get to watch him, he gets to watch me and we get to be proud of each other, which is cool. And And I never really had that before. And like when you get to watch enough of the same thing, like, I don't know if you have this, but like you, you see so many of his shows and I'm sure he sees so many of yours. And you can find, at least I do, when I go to, I went to probably 50 of Claudia's uh, shows last year. And with every show, it's just like, oh my God, you are just getting so fucking good at this. Yeah. And, and yeah. like, and like, it's just, it's so, it's so cool to watch. Of course, there's always nerves, but like things change as a person just evolves as whether it's a comic or a musician or whatever it may be. And being there for the entirety of the ride is such a, a cool experience yeah, under really underratedly is. underratedly yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying it it's cool and it's nice to have like be each other's biggest fans it's, it's cool i have a quick question so you start the road trip to oklahoma you meet in philly what's the first rest stop mm. stop was it fast food was mm. it um, oh we're big fast food people gas station food do you remember yes we stopped at this gas station um because Okay, we stopped at a gas station to get gas. We were about to run out of gas on the highway right when we got onto the highway because he was all nervous and he forgot to get gas. And we stopped at this uh, gas station. We still remember this guy. I think his name was Hayden. He was the gas station attendant. And he told us to like follow him out back. And we were like, what? (laughs) Okay. We were both like, yeah, sure. So we follow him out back and he has double knee braces on. Like, But you know like the knee braces in high school where it's just like a sleeve where someone wears it to be like, I hurt my knee, like those? Sure. Double knee braces on. Compression. Yeah. And he's like hobbling over and then he starts walking fine. So we're like, what the f***? This was a ploy and he's going to kill us. But he brings us to the back and his wife is just sitting in this car and he's like, uh, I want I want you to say hi to my wife, Luke Bryan. Uh, my my fan, my wife is a huge fan of you, Luke Bryan. To Zach, thought he was Luke oh. Bryan, and it was like the best thing ever. He took a bunch of pictures with her, and then we got back in the car. Nice to meet you, Garth Brooks. <laughs> That's so funny. People do that all the time. Like people from home are like, "You're dating Zach Brown band?" I'm like, "Dude, I'm, I'm dating a whole fucking band." What are you talking about? I go, "Yeah, I am, I am." But yeah, that was our first stop, and then 
we got fedoras and we wore them. It was great. It was a great road trip. But what did you eat? Oh, we this ate, I gotta know. Okay, our first, mm, he when he picked me up, he brought his favorite Greek food from Philly. But when we got out of the mm. car to meet the guy in the back with Luke, the Luke Bryan guy, <laughs> his dog, Jack, ate all of the Greek food while we were gone. And then he shit in the car and farted the whole entire way home. I bet. Mm -hmm. But thank God that wasn't you two farting. I know. Thank I, God. I, think I was going to say, thank, about. thank God he was there so you could blame him. I'm sure you guys were tooting 18 hours. <laughs> yeah. You had, tootin it, you had to be tooting me. You just say, damn dog and the Greek food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah honestly, Taco maybe Bell. it was Zach. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. We eat like shit. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds delish. Well, we have this segment on the show where we listen to speak pipes, like um, okay. basically messages that the people send in wanting our advice about certain things. Cool. Just a disclaimer, I'm terrible at this. Okay. So let's see how it goes. Um, <laughs> and if you want to leave questions, go to speakpipe.com slash good guys. Speak pipe. Here we go. I told you I'm very bad at this. This literally happens every go. time. Okay, and here we go. go, go, go. Hey guys, um, I was going to say my name, but now I'm not because <laughs> whatever. Um, love you guys. Anyway, I want to get your opinion on, I guess, sleeping with someone on the first date. Okay, I know you guys are both married. I get it. But I am not. I'm a single girly. And like, if you were to sleep with a girl on the first date, do guys have like a predetermined or I guess post to determined like view on that girl like is she a throwaway now like i just want to know what the vibe is like from two good guys um yeah i don't know if that made sense but thanks love you guys you're a throwaway throwaway is crazy <laughs> no she's hilarious i literally love her um, they always mean disposable, I think is the word. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, yeah, I'm curious to what is your guys' answers? Married men. Uh, I have, I'm a judgment free zone. I think it completely depends on the person and the experience. Like maybe you guys just like spent 18 hours in an 18 wheeler and it's hot and heavy and <laughs> you got to go and stoop in the back. Like you have no choice. Like you're hot and heavy. You think that you're in a like a some kind of country strong type of movie, and like <laughs> I, you're gonna need the jackhammer and overalls, and it just completely depends. <laughs> completely depends. Like I, I don't know, right? Like I don't. I don't know. I think it's a vibe situation. Yeah. I yeah, think. I think that sure. regardless, you're not a throwaway. Go to no. better. Go to BetterHelp.com. <laughs> we we need we need to bring them on, Josh, as a sponsor. We need like some. Type no, no, of no we don't, because we have a much better sponsor called Cerebral. Oh, They're I forgot. Coming. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's just cut it. How Wait, hang on. That? Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Uh, you you gotta go to Cerebral. You gotta go yes. to Cerebral and use it because Cerebral. you. We need to build you I heard up. About Cerebral. You're not mm -hmm. a throwaway. We gotta build you up. <laughs> Cerebral's really good stuff. <laughs> okay, next speak pipe. Hi guys, I love you both so much, and I love the pod. I desperately need some advice. I am currently two no months bunker. pregnant, <laughs> nauseous all day, oh, no. in the nausea phase. Ben, not sure if you know about this, but I'm sure you've had, you've seen your sisters in laws and the nausea of it all. <laughs> Josh, looking for advice, you know. <laughs> My husband can do some advice with just how you dealt with your wife, how you were there for her. He's looking for some chivalry um, advice, or I'm looking for it for him because I, I know I'm being annoying when I keep complaining about it, but I also know that I'm carrying his baby and <laughs> taking care of our other baby. And I also know that I'm amazing and I don't want to complain, but I also know I could be complaining too much anyways. So I would love some advice and I just love you guys so much. I love how proudly Jewish you are. I love the pod and you are my faves. Wow. Wow. She's soothing. She's talking like so soothing. Or she's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> hiding from her husband. <laughs> terrifying. Honestly, I have some advice for her. I really do. First of all, does love, she want love advice love her, for her husband? I think that she wants... I, I took from What's your it advice that she, to stop being sick? No, I thought that she wanted advice on how to counteract her nausea. Was that not? <laughs> Me too. Okay. Okay. I so I had wanted husband advice. No, I have a wonderful Chinese acupuncture trick that gets oh. me through my nausea. And I learned this while being on Ozempic, which was 
you get nauseous. It just, it, it happens. And you got to figure Why things out. Why are you out. seeing this past tense? You're on Ozempic. <laughs> no. By, by the way, I forgot that I went back on. I am back on. <laughs> <laughs> but I was off and now we're back on. But still the trick, I'm no longer nauseous, but the trick still applies. You take your fingers like this and you put it on your wrist and you hold your wrist like this. You create a pressure point for 10 seconds. If you ever feel like you're going to throw up, you won't throw up anymore. Wow. wow. I could have used Compl that in my life. It's it you're really, just listening. We're it, pushing on our it wrists. Re it really works. You're pushing on your wrists. That's what it is. You ever seasick? Wow. Anything you push on that point. You're not going to be sick. So if the question, lady, was how do you con counteract <laughs> your nausea, that's what it is. If it's are you complaining too much, you got to ask your husband. And if your husband tells you that you're complaining too much when you're pregnant, you should probably kick him in the nuts. He's a throwaway. He's a throwaway. He's a throwaway. Mm -hmm. He's a throwaway. <laughs> Also, ginger tea, also, and I'm not a doctor, and this is not medical advice, but my wife, her OB, would tell her to take diphenhydramine, a.k.a. Benadryl, Ooh. at night, which was okay for her. Again, this is not medical advice, and I am not a medical professional, <laughs> but for my wife, uh, it A, helped her to sleep, and or Unisom, these were two allowed things for a pregnant person, mm -hmm. it helped her to sleep, and it combated uh, nausea. And if she didn't take it in the morning, she was always nauseous. So you guys actually have the best advice for this woman. Or a good old-fashioned wow. ginger ale. Get a good old-fashioned oh, ginger love ale. Me a you know? yeah, or a good old-fashioned gin and tonic. Drink while pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ketamine mm -hmm. drip. That probably mm -hmm. helps the nausea. Ketamine. Okay, let's see. S Samantha, let's, let's pray this is good. Hey, Josh and Ben, a uh, big time moron here, and I have an extremely <laughs> hot take. It's our followers. Um, <laughs> okay, I like that. I'm sick and tired of sharing a bed with my husband. Mm -hmm. He keeps me up all night long. He tosses and turns. He's always coughing. He has to go to the bathroom like 15 times in the middle of the night, in which every time he goes to the bathroom, he has to brush his teeth, in which he's gagging. And he snores oh, so God. Hard, and he's just like not fun to sleep next to. I have brought up sleeping Your husband in my is own room or like going to sleep in the spare room, and he gets so offended by it. But I'm just so tired. I feel like I haven't had a good night's sleep since we moved in together five oh. years ago. Oh. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Would you guys be offended if your wives <laughs> wanted to sleep in a different room? Um, let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Oh, divorce Shrek. That seems terrible. <laughs> I, I don't couldn't imagine. That's my biggest fear. Like, I, can't I, sleep I, don't in even, I don't even know what to say. Like, the part that threw me through a loop was all 15 times that he goes to the bathroom in the middle of the night, <laughs> he brushes his teeth. teeth. He's he brushes, a serial killer. He brushes his teeth 15 times in the middle and of the night. he gags the whole every, time? Every night. Every <laughs> night. Like, And the guy completely changed. In the beginning, I was like, okay, you're married to a big fat fatty that has some sleep apnea problems. And like, it's fine. Like he snores. Machine, yeah. He drinks a lot. He pees. You know, like the, the classic fat stuff. Like it, it is what it is. But now I think he's nuts. Yeah. Get sleep and get addicted to sleeping pills. Oh, yes. Right? Ambien, I, Trazodone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, Lunesta. Like a light. Yeah. I think this guy just needs to be self-aware enough to know that he's a terrible sleeping partner. And yeah, sleep in the other room. You're lucky that she's not divorcing you exactly. all together. So be comfortable <laughs> that, be happy that she's comfortable still living in the same home as you. But this is a big problem. He should have to sleep in the spare bedroom now. You're That's where I sleep. That's your <laughs> I, I, I'm actually not. I, I I would say my wife and I sleep together 50% of the time. I was going to say, like, when you guys are married, do you sleep in the same bed the whole time? Or wh what's the reason for it? Personally, maybe. we do. But I feel like kids maybe change I was going to say, yeah. I don't know. I can't speak for that. When, you're, when, when you have a, a baby, mm -hmm. you have to do shifts. True. You have to divide and conquer. And, like, because you want to do your best to give each other, like, five to six hours. Oh, that's hell. I know. So then that helps because mm -hmm. usually the baby's in the bedroom. And so okay. one of you goes into the guest room, the other sleeps with the baby. They wake up for the first five or six hours of the night. Then you switch. Shift off. Okay. Mm. It's like a tag team thing. Also in the morning, like my, my son uh, will wake, like today I'm gone all day working. How old is your son? Five and one. Oh, you have two. I have two. Oh my gosh. Congrats. I, I like only them. knew about the five-year-old. Wow. I know. It's crazy. Wow. we out here. Oh, reproducing. Wow. More? Strong Can I have more? My wife wants more. Are you going to have babies? Yeah. God when? willing. Pop up to, them out? Up to the man upstairs. We'll see. I don't know. Could oh, be Could yes. be now. Could be today. Wow. I don't know. No, She's you got to get off the Ozemp or it's going to have a six toe. Yeah. And a cone head. Yeah. And that, that plus <laughs> the Jewish genes, you just never know.
You really never know. The inbreeding. The <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna win the are, Nobel Prize just, and have nine. Just, just have a mustache on his forehead, just like a, <laughs> just an upper lip on your forehead. Yeah, <laughs> creepy. But yeah, uh, soon for sure. Soon for sure. I hope. I hope. <gasps> Exciting. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. when you also have been like, like my wife and I have been together twelve years, mm -hmm. we have different. Some nights we're totally aligned, and mm -hmm. it's like we want to watch something together, or we want to canoodle, or like yeah. something, and it's just like we can both just feel that energy. Mm -hmm. Other times we couldn't be in more different worlds. Mm. Like she, like I'll be tired and she'll want to watch like three hours straight of Real Housewives. And I'm like, there's so much energy in this room right now. <laughs> and I really got to bring it down mm -hmm. or vice versa. Like I'll want to be on my laptop looking up like weird mid 2000s BMWs mm -hmm. while listening to Andrew Huberman podcast. Obviously. And she'll be like, can you turn off some device or it's bad? So <laughs> Then I'll be like, I'm gonna go in the other room, mm -hmm. which is fair, yeah, because yeah. you can't always be on the same page with anyone ever. Yes, no. yeah, that's marriage. That's marriage. It's marriage, boys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So on our show, we have some, something called the "What Are You Nuts" segment, which is okay. people, places, and things. Anything you have a gripe with or about currently, we'll we'll start. We'll give you a minute okay. to think of it. Okay, but and it could be minor, major, whatever. Just like something that's annoying you. Okay. That sticks in your craw. Ben, you want to go first? Or you want me to go? I, I can go. Um, I just got back from Utah. Spent a beautiful two weeks out west. Love Utah. Love it. Love the Mormons. Love the jazz. Love everything in Utah except for two things. The first thing is the Utah state liquor laws. And that mm -hmm. is a what are you nuts in and of itself. Completely government regulated. It's New Year's Eve, right? New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve falls on a Sunday. Do you know that... In Try. Utah, you cannot buy liquor on a Sunday, even from a government store. You cannot buy liquor on a Sunday. But it fell on New Year's. It fell on New Year's Eve, <laughs> right? So everybody's like running around town. How do I get a bottle of Vouv Clicquot or something to just pop? You can't find anything, nothing. So that is a, what are you, nuts? Because I could go to CVS and pick up a 30 rack of Bud Light, which I did <laughs> to play beer pong. So explain to me, I can buy beer on Sunday, but I can't buy champagne? We so wow. beer and wine is available at no not beer and wine just, just beer. beer. Be, usually they what? they usually they group uh, spirits separately and wine and beer. Wine and beer have their own typically set of laws. Yeah, they're together. Usually. They're together, totally separate. Wine and spirits not available. Beer in CVS available. All I got to say, what are you nuts? The next one, very quickly, <laughs> the whole time I'm there, I can't breathe. I can't breathe because the fucking air in Utah is so goddamn dry. The, I, like, the tourism board should tell you to bring a humidifier with you on the plane because it is literally that dry. You get there, you go into the grocery stores, the convenience stores, there's these oxygen tanks. You know those like handheld oxygen so you can... <gasps> So you're yeah. taking yeah, like a big they huff. Have, they have them on cruise ships. Yeah. So you're taking a I big feel like it's huff. A placebo. Yeah, it must be. It must be. All I know is I had a sinus infection for two weeks. I was nursing it every day. Aquaphor, <laughs> uh, nasal spray, uh, humidifier, and Jews shouldn't be allowed in Utah. What are you nuts? Mm. Yeah. Well, ban them. What are you nuts? <laughs> ban them. <laughs> <laughs> Jews are banned from Utah. Flip it, Marshall. That's what. <laughs> out, out, out. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so my Woody and Nuts moment is yesterday, I'm going to yoga. I'm a core power yoga guy. Nice. Hot yoga. Nice. So I'm walking up and I see a, a police car parked and I'm like, okay, no big deal. And then I'm walking into yoga and five feet away is a dead body. Oh, who? it's the town. It's, yeah, it's just, and there's a sheet over it. And, but I can see his shoes are wearing pumas. <gasps> and I, I know. And... The police officer is like... That's kind of scarring. Well, he just says it's okay. Unfortunately, it's a guy. It was natural causes. I'm like, <sighs> I can see the needle in his arm. Oh, There's okay, nothing natural okay. about this. Mm -hmm. and, the most unnatural way and, to go. <laughs> yeah. Like, the cop's like, it's okay. Like, we've we've covered it. It's it's very sad. But, um, the you know, the coroner's on, the, on their way. So I'm seeing this. I'm like, wow. So I walk in and I say to the yoga teacher, who's lovely and very typical yogi, crunchy, granola, spiritual. <laughs> I'm like, well, how about outside, right? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she's like, yeah, you know, just hoping that his spirit is in a peaceful place. But um, you know what? Class is going to be really great today. And we're just going to really, we're going to help to get our minds off of things anyway. Get a strap in two blocks, and I'm like, babe, do not try to get me through this right now. Like, she was obviously so rattled yeah. and trying to yoga me out of it. Like, it's really hard, but we're gonna do a couple down dog salutations as a way to honor uh, our, oh our friend who has passed. And I'm like, honey, it's okay. Like, if you hold her shoulder, everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> this is very dry. I'm gonna be like, what are you nuts? Like, you don't have to yogify the dead man outside. Yeah, you can't. It's gonna be okay. This this no. is unfortunate. And now we're, we'll do yoga as a, as be a, a different It'll be a sad thought. yoga. Yeah. It'll be a little sad yoga. <laughs> yeah. Great sash. Really, really oh, stretched. Good. Yeah. Well, it makes you think. And, that and by, sash. The, by the time I walked out, guy was good. Mm. It was great. Okay. Mine, I feel like people are going to be really mad at this one, but okay. You know how the new Mean Girls is coming out? There yep. is? Why yeah. is it a musical? Oh, it's a musical? It's a fucking musical. But I, there's been a musical for a while, right? Um, wasn't it on Broadway? Yeah, but like it's a remake of the movie, but it's a musical. It's a music. It's a movie musical, movie. Josh. It's a movie With musical. Who? Like, and Tina Fey is behind it. Uh, she's in it, but R Renee Rapp is the main, is the lead. She's Regina. Who's that? She is. Uh oh, Marshall. <laughs> am I gonna get dragged for that? No, Should I know who Renee no, Rapp is. No, I, I love no, Renee Rapp, but I. I'm, I can't believe you haven't heard that this movie's coming out. I know. This is actually shocking to oh, me. I had no. What? I feel like it's everywhere. Everyone's talking about it. And it like comes no. out like next week. Where have yeah. you been, movie what are you man? Doing? Where I don't have you mean been? It's been at yoga. Movies and funerals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in mourning, you fucking monster. Yeah, let me grieve. <laughs> a fucking musical. It shouldn't be a fucking musical. It's Mean Girls, and I'm pissed about it. What the fuck? They also shouldn't have remade it if they're not going to put any of the original Mean Girls in it. I'm, I'm mad in. about it. I'm in. Yeah. What are you nuts? Stupid. I hate musicals. Do you guys like musicals? I just... like movie movie musicals. High school no. musical. What a That's film. different. <laughs> That's what different. A... Yeah, That's no, I God. no no. Normally, I'm with you. Um, okay. And with this Mean Girls, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it's probably no no bueno. While we're talking yeah. about movies quickly, though, because uh, as Josh knows, I see if I see a movie, mm -hmm. I'm going to see it late. I'm always going to see it really, re typically it's really <laughs> late. Like uh -huh. I watched Basketball Diaries for the first time like nine months ago and that movie is from like 1997. <laughs> but uh, I just want to comment that I saw Barbie and it was fucking horrible. You hated it? And I wanted to make sure that I said it on this podcast because of how I... Uh, angry people get when somebody doesn't like that movie and yeah, i just my co-host hated it and and i just want to let you Josh know Dave. um sorry i'm mine and oh, she's oh, a oh. grace and she's a woman so the whole internet called her a misogynist and for five months she couldn't post without all of her comments being like you fucking misogynist you hate women you're just like you want to oh be a man God. one of the guys and she's like i just didn't enjoy the movie I'm just I, like, I, I'm not a bad person. <laughs> I just didn't enjoy the movie. Will Ferrell was amazing, as he always <laughs> is. And I just didn't think it was a good movie. And I posted about it on Instagram, and everybody called me a misogynist for not liking the movie. And all I have to say is, if you don't want men to comment on the movie, make it a women's only film. Advertise, mm. if you're a man, you can't see it. You can't see it. But if I am a movie goer- <laughs> Make the movie like Curves the Gym, mm, the yeah. all women's gym. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Those, those gyms are crazy. Curves <laughs> Gym. Uh, <laughs> brought to you by Curves Studio. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, uh, but I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that I thought that the movie fucking sucked. And yeah. um, it's not because I'm a misogynist. I uh, love to lift women up and I hated it. I liked it, but I hated Saltburn. And I said that on the internet last week and I said, can't hear the end of it. It's like, why can't you just not like a movie? You should what, be able what to. Was yeah. salt, what was Saltburn about? Marshall? <laughs> Actually, too long. Maybe too long. You leave it alone. It's not you even about it. it. It's just like, uh, it's just a bunch of like shock factor. It's like, just like people being hot and it's like aesthetically pleasing, but it was a stupid movie. God, I'm going to get ruined. Sounds like Barbie. <laughs> Sounds like Barbie. Wasn't we'll that Barbie? <laughs> Wasn't that Barbie? Like, what was the difference? Uh, yeah. I mean, to each their own. Exactly. You should be able to not like movies. No I, meant that it, your decision. no, I meant that Barbie was just like a bunch of hot people. It's that's like, fair. Because that's what Barbie was. Which is why I'm It was kind of a it. musical too. Rihanna, thank <laughs> you for being on the pod. Oh, is, there, of course. is there anything you want to plug? 
um listen to my podcast plan brie and bffs um talk a lot of shit no politics safe place and you can say you hate movies on my podcast Mm -hmm. wow yeah thank you guys for having me you guys are awesome so funny thank you this is super fun five stars if not what are you nuts yeah i'll I'll call back and say you can't air any of this actually yeah (laughs) (laughs) no one's gonna understand that joke because i've cut out the Jeanette part (laughs) (laughs) well rate review subscribe send it to a friend you know grow the pod grow the pod Grow the pod. Yeah, leave a review. It means a lot. Five stars. We Matt Rife, repost, please. Shout out Matt Rife. We mm-hmm. love you. You're welcome anytime.